Hello again, whiskey friends. Thank you for joining today's whiskey discussion. Looking forward to getting into this. You know, these are always inspired by questions that I get either in chat on the YouTube channels or in the comments or on Instagram. And I like to do these video responses. It gives me a chance to think it through. And I think it's just a fun way to talk about it. And I want to hear what your thoughts are on this topic in the comments. So be sure to come back and leave me a comment here. But today's discussion is going to be about bunkering whiskeys. Specifically, what brands do I have backups of? So I thought that was an interesting question because the, the person that asked it knows that I pretty much open everything that comes through the door. I don't have a lot of patience. But what things don't do I not open and why don't I open them? And that tends to be things that I want to have backups of, brands that I like to always have on my shelf and I don't leave it up to chance. And there are a few reasons why I do this. So as we kick off the show and get into it, I'm also going to get into a little background of why I think it is a good idea to carry some of these brands because the future is a very, very uncertain place. Well, thanks for joining, everybody. Let's kick off the show. All right. So... The, before we even get into this, let's even get some little bit of background on lessons learned in the journey of this whiskey hobby. Now, I have been at this since around 2018. I would say that's where I really started jumping into the deep end of this whiskey habit, hobby. And within that, I was spoiled at the time and I didn't know it. So around 2018 is where I would just pick up three, four different bottles on the shelves. I would come home, I'd review them on distiller. I'd have a whole lot of fun with them. And then I'd reach out to one of my friends who was pretty much my whiskey guru at the time and say, Hey, I really like this brand. And he would just text me back. Yeah, that's MGP. And then the next day I'd be like, dude, this brand's awesome. Yeah. That's made from MGP too. And I you know, began to realize that I kept circling the wagon on Indiana bourbons and Never really uncircled that wagon since then. I've, I've definitely gone deeper and deeper into MGP. But that was an interesting experience because when you were into MGP 2018, 2019, gosh, I wish I was into it before then and had some forethought. But if you were into it in that time, the rug did get pulled out from underneath you. So I took it for granted that what I bought on the shelves in 2018, I could continue buying in 2019 and 2020. No, not the case. My daily drinker, as an example, was Boone County 1833. If you aren't familiar with that product, it was only $50, $55. It was 12 years, 90 proof. I would put that thing up against like a well or 12 year any day of the week. It would blow it away. It was amazing. And that was the thing that I was like cutting my teeth on. And I bought so many of those. And then one day it was gone. And very similarly, the other thing that dried up was all of the MGP single barrels. So I drank a whole lot of MGP single barrels as if it was just an Eagle Rare store pick even, you know, just, just willy nilly. Let's just drink that thing. So these I used to collect all the time. I'm lucky I still got eh, six, seven, eight left. I will continue to hoard these for special occasions, uh, not just Boone counties, but Joseph Magnus single barrels and a couple other brands. But man, I just thought I would get these forever. And then come 2019 going into 2020, all of the age stock on MGP dried up and then I could only buy four years. That's an education right there. And that's why I like Bunker and Whiskies. The other one I would say is a good example of that is the Knob Creek 15-year store picks when they were coming out around the same era, 2018, 2019, even the beginning of 2000. And there were lots of rumors that these were going to go away and not come back. So I would just, every time I saw one, 45 bucks, I buy it, I buy it. I only have one open at any given time. So I've got about six of these bunkered. 
But that is the lesson learned, you know, and the reason why it might be an all right thing to keep some of these whiskeys just tucked away to enjoy later. There is no guarantee whatsoever that you can buy that brand in that way at that age statement or with that master distiller that it's going to taste that way. All these factors, all the 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 supply chain lines, all the ingredients that they're getting, the barrels that they're getting, everything that influences the taste could change it in the future. So buy it while you like it. Be selective, though. So now with that setup out of the way, let's get into the five things that I currently buy because I can't buy the Knob Creek 15s or the, the 12 years MGP single barrels anymore. That's said and done. So what are the things that I buy today and I tuck away and why do I tuck them away? So first, we're going to start out on the one that I just commented about a second ago. Eagle Rare Store Picks. I don't bunker a lot of Buffalo Trace products. I don't go back to a bunch of Buffalo Trace products. But Eagle Rare Store Picks definitely have a special place in my heart. And I do love cracking these open. I love sharing them. They're so accessible to other people. And they are great gifts. So I kind of keep a handful of these on the, the bar, on the backups, you know, all the time. And a lot of times they do end up as gifts as I get another one, exceed five. But I at least always have one to open up when one's done. And the other reason I like those is, well, at least if you get it for MSRP, they're not too expensive either. And that's going to be a theme that you'll see through four of these five bottles that I'm about to show you. The next one, I don't think this is a surprise either. Every time I see it, I buy it. That's the Four Roses uh, single barrel barrel strength. You know, I don't have a sense of what my favorite recipe is yet. You know, I've probably gone through three, four, maybe five of these myself. And I don't think I've done a good job keeping track of what I like this recipe, this recipe, this recipe. So right now I got about six, seven of these backed up. Maybe someday I can do the whole flight of all the different recipes if I uh, keep bunker in these. So we'll see. There's always a time and place to open these, and that would be the time that I just call Yahtzee and open all of, all of them. All right. Next one on the list, I'm going to deviate a little bit here. This is going to be the most expensive one, and I got to do some context on it. But it's the Lucky 7, 14-year proprietor. Now they're becoming 15-year proprietors. I have more of these bunkered if I would stop drinking them. But these are very special whiskeys to me. I mean, I this was one of my favorite bourbons last year, if not my favorite bourbon last year, if you were to combine all the experiences I had across all these different single barrels. Hitters every single time. And coming off of the lesson of the MGP 12 year, when somebody isn't in control of their own stocks, guess what? It does dry up. It does change. And I wouldn't be surprised for that to happen to the proprietor. So we're seeing those go up to a 15-year age statement. But how long can they go on having 15-year whiskey? That's not an endless well. I wouldn't be surprised at some point we see a six-year proprietor, an eight-year proprietor, a 10-year proprietor. As the older stocks you know, die off, but the brand itself lives on. And sometimes you're chasing the shadow of a brand, and I can see this being one of them. Now, what's important for this one, though, is the other thing that can happen with these brands, and it's happening with the Lucky 7. You know, it's actually one or two things. Either the, the whole chain is raising the price, or the, uh, the retailer's catching on and raising the price. But when I first got into these, they were 120 140 around that range. Wow, amazing value for what they give you. Then they crept up to 140 160 Now with that 15-year proprietor, that one was 200 and that's what makes it tough to bunker. I'm not interested in just buying it to buy it and put it underneath there. There are other things I could get. You know, it's all competitive and based on the context of that period of time. And the Lucky 7 ain't any more expensive. And maybe I'll just have one or two of them and be happy, tuck those away for a few years, crack them open on special occasions. Next up on the list is going to be Russell's private selects. Man, do I love these. I buy them every single time. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I mean, these were 65, 70 bucks for the longest time, crept up to 80, 85. Now I'm seeing them at a hundred. Uh, you're starting to get me a little bit, but at least the age statements are still there. They're sometimes 10 years old, sometimes even almost up to 11 years old. So still some value in that, but man, don't get any more expensive. 
But at least when I did buy them and I bunkered them, I was paying them uh, you know, a lot less than what I got to pay now if I continue to do so. But this is something that I do like having open, one open, you know, at all times. As soon as I kill one, I open the next one. I even do a little bit of a passing of the torch and do a head-to-head -head between the one that's dead and the one that's going to live on. All right. The last bottle that I'm going to highlight here, and I've been at this now for probably about a year and a half. This one has all types of shades of what happened with Knob Creek 15-year store picks, those old store picks at Knob Creek. When the rumor started that those were going to dry up, they didn't, and they just kept coming out six months later, even a year later from the first time that I heard of that rumor. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. No more. That's over. I think the same thing is going to happen here soon if I'm reading the tea leaves right on these older light whiskeys. So this is a cool one, a bull run. It's a 12 year that was finished in Pinot Noir casts. It's got this cool, uh, cool uh, aliens attack stickers, uh, Mars attack sticker. And it comes out of NASA, this particular pick. And the best part is if we can see the price tag here, and it was only $49.99. This was a hitter for $49.99. But I am hearing that the light whiskeys are drying up. So every chance I get to get these 14-year, 15-year hazmat light whiskeys, I'm just getting them. They're 70 bucks, 80 bucks. They they drink well above that. So I'll just collect those. By the end of it, maybe I'll have a half dozen, eight of them, and then I'll be enjoying them for the next decade when they all disappear and it becomes a thing of the past. Or it all resets just like the MGP did with the bourbons with the story that I gave earlier when I went from I went from buying 12 year nonstop to all of a sudden I could only get a four year. It's probably going to happen on a light whiskey. Suddenly it's going to become six to eight years. It's going to be like the standard. So keep that in mind. These things don't continue on. What you buy today is not what you can buy tomorrow. And that's why I like keeping these backups. Not for hoarding purposes, not for reselling purposes. It's purely so that I can continue to enjoy the things that I like to enjoy at a future date. And if they do completely dry up and go away, that then becomes a special pour that other people will appreciate even more at a bottle share. And that's the reason to keep backups. The future is not guaranteed. Well, thank you for joining me today for today's whiskey discussion. I would love to hear in the comments, what are the things that you always keep stocked? What are the things that even if you have one, two, three, four of them, you buy another one anyway? I'm interested to hear not only what it is, but the reason why you do it. And yeah, let's get those brands out there. And don't make fun of people that sit there and, and don't open their whiskeys because they might actually have a good reason for it. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'll catch you later, whiskey friends. Bye, everybody. <laughs>